Hello, hello, hello. How you doing folks? Hiya! Welcome back to Tappanoff Farm. We've just been taking the goats up to the north field here. So we're up here in the north field. This is our wildest area of the farm and the goats love it up here. Yeah. Although it's a lot less wild since we had the sheep. True. Um, it's really lovely now. It's more of a meadow. Mm. It used to be quite hard to walk through, mm -hmm. but now the kind of raspberries have been... Chewed back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely a lot more grass coming through, mm -hmm. which the goats are loving. Yeah. And the raspberries were quickly taking over this entire field. We brought them up here because we're just moving a grazing cell for them down in the west field, which is where we have a silver pasture system, the mm -hmm. integration of trees within grazing, productive trees within grazing. Mm -hmm. And the goats have been rotationally grazing through that system for the last few weeks. Yeah. About mm -hmm. three weeks now. Yeah. Maybe two weeks, or about no, a, yeah, a week in each cell. Uh -huh, yeah, they're in the, going into the third cell yeah. today. So, so yesterday yeah. I scythed uh, around the edges so that we can today put up the electric fencing because mm -hmm. obviously you need the grass to be low yeah. so that it doesn't earth the fencing. And we want it to be extra hot because we're trying to make sure that this time the goat kids get a bit respectful of the fencing because yeah. that was the mistake from last time. Yeah. Uh, it was a bit too soft. I didn't work. want them to get hurt, which is fair enough, <laughs> but just just takes one shock. Yeah, and, and we've then... got a lot more valuable trees now. We've planted all these yeah. apple trees everywhere. Mm -hmm. So we want them to stay in, but yeah. fingers crossed, it seems to be, or yeah. touch wood, it seems to be going okay at the yeah. moment. They, mm -hmm. they are staying in. The, the goat kids have received quite a few little uh, buzzes on the noses. Yeah. Um, and that's taught them not to go through the fence. Yeah. So yeah, as you see, the goat kids are getting bigger. They're growing oh, by the day. They've been eating uh, solids, I yeah. guess. Yeah, yeah the they're, trees they're and they're... grass since quite soon after they were yeah. born. Yeah, um, at least um, less than less than two weeks after yeah. they were mm -hmm. born, they were starting to experiment with eating uh, the the leaves and the, the browse that we would take the adults mm -hmm. in, and the hay, of course, and, mm -hmm. and grass when they were let out. 
They start off just kind of playing at it, like looking at their mum and just kind of chewing, but not really Learning, eating. Learning, yeah, and then imitating. It, yeah, and then suddenly they're just, I don't know, they're almost eating as much as the adults yeah, are, it looks no, they're like. really chowing down. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they're all mixed together in the bio now. We were yeah. keeping them separate. Mm-hmm. We were keeping Mandy, the mother, with the two kids uh, away yeah. from the two white ones, the British Salmons. Mm-hmm. But they're all integrated now and getting on really well. We're a little yeah. bit worried about Mandy's yeah. uh, health. You might have noticed she's very skinny. She mm. was quite underweight yeah. before they... Uh, before she gave birth, um, and unfortunately, Uh-oh. that's actually got worse. Here they come. Oh, we've got Billy. <laughs> He's very friendly. <laughs> yeah, so this is Billy. Hello, man. You can Hello. see their horns are developing very well. We decided not to take their horns off. Yeah. Um, we are still a bit soft. Yeah. <laughs> Billy has been castrated, uh, so he is oh, now technically gosh. a weather. We're not sure what's going to happen with, with Billy. No. Um, but for now, we're keeping him. Oh, la la. <laughs> we do have to be careful with their horns, um, but with the small numbers of goats that we keep, yeah. um, we can make sure that we're not <laughs> getting too close to them. Although behavior like this <laughs> doesn't help. Um, at the moment, their horns are almost at their worst stage when they're little and pointy like this. Yeah. Once they start curving backwards towards and pointing away from their front of their skull, it will be less chance of getting spiked in the face. <laughs> you wimp. Oh, hello. <laughs> it's a loving. Yeah. You can't do much around here without the goats coming and uh, investigating and seeing <laughs> what's going on. Yes, Heather. That is a camera. You look gorgeous today, don't worry. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so, uh, oh, so we thought we'd do a catch up. Oh God, <laughs> she is so heavy. So we thought we'd do a catch up video today, um, since it has been a wee while since we vlogged, and you guys are just gonna have to get used to that, really, because we're very busy with the wee one with our daughter Lillian, who is now um, seven and a half weeks old. Yeah. And she has been doing absolutely great. We've been having a lovely time. Just getting to know her and letting her get to know us and the farm and the animals. Um, and of course that does make a difference to our lifestyle here on the farm. Um, and we knew that would be the case, hence why we decided to um, pull back on the veg boxes this year. We're not doing our CSA uh, veggies. We're definitely putting a lot more energy now into setting up other systems on the farm when we have that time. So that's things like fencing and other home gardens and fruit production, orchard development, um, having goat kids, having human kids. And of course, <laughs> and of course we've been setting up our shepherd's hut um, so that we do have some accommodation for income. Um, this is something we've been wanting to do for years actually, is have somewhere for people to come and stay on the farm because we often get requests for people wanting to come and stay. And uh, we ourselves love going and staying on people's farms and having quirky places to stay. So we've got a quirky shepherd's hut with a wood-fired outdoor bath. And it's beautiful, that's all set up and ready to go now. So if you'd fancy coming and staying at Tappanoff Farm, you can find us on Airbnb. Um, you can come and stay and see what it's like to be on a permaculture farm. You can see the goats and stay in a beautiful shepherd's hut. It's, it's got a lovely wood burning stove in it. Right next to the pond, you can go for a swim in the pond. Um, we love it, we've been using it for the last year, getting, giving it a road test. Um, and uh, yeah, we can definitely say it's a beautiful place to stay for a holiday. So um, yeah, look us up on Airbnb where you can find all the information there. I'll put a link in the description below uh, to the Airbnb site, even if you just fancy a nosy and having a look at what we're doing. So like I was saying, it has been a little bit difficult to get the camera out and make the vlogs when um, our routine has been slightly changed with the beautiful arrival of Lillian. We've still been carrying on with work on the farm when we can. So today we're gonna give you a catch up. Really excited to show you what we've been doing over the last wee while and um, tell you what we've got planned too. She's sleeping. Let's go. <laughs> Let's get stuff done. Yeah. <laughs> All 
right, Rose has just headed into the house to change Lillian. And I thought I'd meander down from the north field through this new area of forest garden that we've planted this year. Give you guys a look. Um, right now it looks a little bit just like an overgrown field with some straw chucked around. But that's often how a forest garden begins life. We planted a whole bunch of fruit trees and fruit shrubs a couple of months ago, maybe three months ago now. Um, at the start of spring anyway, when the trees were still dormant, these were bought as bare root trees. This area really has just been a bit of a wasteland, somewhere where we would occasionally graze the goats um, and maybe the geese. It sits to the north of Alder Coppice, which we've talked about a lot, this small area of wood fuel coppice that we're growing, where we often graze the geese, but it's very wet down here, hence why we're growing Alder. But just up the bank, it's a real difference. We've got some very dry soil. To the north of these trees, there's a ditch, an overflow ditch from our pond. So this is a, this is a berm that the trees are sitting on. So the soil um, is quite dry and free draining. So we've really just gone with, again, tree species that work for us here. We've got a plum. Uh, this variety is um, blue tit. And this is one we've not tried growing, to be honest. Um, so plum and uh, black currant. These came out of our nursery. These were black currants we've been growing from cuttings. We've got an aronia berry here. Great uh, berry that grows very well in our climate. Our American and Canadian viewers will know this one. Raspberries, Morello cherry, uh, nitrogen fixing shrubs. Um, we've got hazel. We've got cherry plum. Uh, we've got whole assortment of things, several apple varieties. We've got a Saskatoon, again, from North America, Canada. So really varied, mixed uh, canopy to shrub species so far. We'll probably stay with that with regards to how many layers of uh, useful plant and tree species we'll be putting in here. We're going to keep it quite simple. I'll probably get around to planting comfrey in here um, as a chop and drop and a dynamic accumulator, something we can feed the goats regularly. Um, but it's got to fend for itself up here because we're quite a distance from the house. The house being way down there. So this is quite a wild area of forest garden. We had a friend come and help uh, do a day of mulching. So we've given all of the trees a spot mulching of cardboard and a very thick layer of hay which um, was the spent which was the wasted hay that the sheep didn't eat um, which was up in the north field so we we didn't have far to bring that hay down um, the hay is also mixed with manure and urine so we put that around the trees um, we don't mind using hay in this instance obviously hay will have probably a lot of seed in there but we don't mind we're quite happy to uh, maybe reseed this area we know it was a lot of red clover so um, nitrogen fixing again, so that's quite a beneficial weed to have anyway in your hay. Uh, so we don't mind if that does sort of spread. We wouldn't necessarily use hay mulch in the veggie gardens or anything because that might be just giving us a lot more work than we want. Um, but it's going to be beautiful when it's mature and we'll be definitely seeing a difference just in a couple of years. Um, so yeah, really nice to just continue these uh, mixed, multi-layer, multi-strata, um, edible and useful forests all around the property, really. So, and it leads right up to our shepherd's hut that I was talking about earlier. The shepherd's hut itself is surrounded by um, immature and emerging food forests. Um, we've put a hedge um, to the south of the hut, which, of course, has edible species within it. There's hazelnut and elderberry. Uh, things like that, crab apples. So I'm going to just cut down through what we call the hay meadow because this is once where we cut hay. Um, I'm not sure we'll be doing that again. Um, we've got plans for potentially putting more apple trees in here to make it more of a dedicated, to, to make a dedicated orchard. Um, but for now it's really great grazing for the geese and the goats. But I'm going to cut down through here. Need to get the goats in here quite soon because it's getting quite overgrown. OK, 
Okay, I'm just gonna cut through this hybrid willow hedge that we've got, dividing the field up, and I'm into one of the cells, the grazing cells, here in our silver pasture system. So again, silver pasture is the integration of productive trees within grazing. Here we've got a row of sweet chestnut. Over there we've got black locust. Um, we've got a very mature hedge of willow, two different types of willow. And then over there, over the side of that willow, we've got two rows of apple trees. And the idea actually is that this is going to be an apple growing silver pasture. Um, we've been changing our minds a little bit. This was designed to be a wood fuel silver pasture, um, considering we burn a lot of wood to heat the house. Um, but we have realized that this is really good real estate. Being quite close to the house, this could be, is potentially a really great site for um, growing a bit more of a higher value food crop, either for us or for the CSA for selling on. Um, so we are slowly removing some of these wood fuel species trees. I mean, of course, sweet chestnut, as we all know, does produce a, a very beautiful edible nut, but I'm not sure how that will do here in the northeast of Scotland. And I had really just planted them as fast growing um, timber species, which can be coppiced, regrow to produce multiple stems, which we can burn. Um, it's an experiment because I've never grown chestnut before, but it is growing incredibly well. We've got an area of uh, chestnut and hazel silver pasture again up above the market garden and the chestnut there are, are way taller than me. Um, we're only looking at maybe about three years of growth. So they do grow very well here, but for this area we've just decided we would rather get some apple trees in here. Um, we're into planting them as well, but we're removing some of these chestnut and the black locust over time and putting them into hedges and other places a little bit further away, so more appropriate for timber growing. I'm walking down one of the scythe strips. So I was out here yesterday scything um, so that we can put up a new electric cell to be able to graze the goats in here safely. You can see next to me, next door is the cell that they were in and then again the cell before that so these two cells has taken about two weeks on and off to graze you know we've only got a small handful of goats and when it starts to rain we often have to take them in so but it equals maybe five days they've been grazing in each cell um, but they're ready to come into this one now uh, this is a really good level for them to graze so I saved some uh, strips so that we can put the electric fencing up um, easily so we might get a chance to do that today um, but the goats are happy up in the north field um, and maybe they'll just stay there today and we'll put them in here tomorrow but it, as a system it works really well uh, rotationally grazing them through in between these rows of productive trees and yeah touch wood we have had no escapes yet through this um, smart fence. This is the Gallagher smart fence that we love using. Um, a four strand reel of electric fencing makes it incredibly fast to put up and take down and move um, rather than dealing with netting, which I really can't stand anymore, but we still have to use netting for the geese. Um, I'm just gonna hop over. Don't worry, electric's off. I'm gonna head over to the goat shed now, or what we call the buyer and uh, have a look at the few changes we've made. For those of you who've been watching our vlogs for a while, you might remember that we had this very messy, kind of what we would call a corral. I don't really think that's the appropriate term, but it's what we called it. But a very messy little tunnel into the goat buyer. Um, it was very narrow. You can see it was this area, this brown area here where it's been muddy. That was this walkway that we had and it was made up of old bits of uh, scaffolding, poles covered in chicken wire as, as kind of walls and, and wooden palings and uh, sheep fencing, sheep netting, pallets galore with sticks in them to stop the goats from jumping out and over. Uh, it, it really wasn't pretty. So we've changed all that um, and we've created this very genteel, it's very beautiful. Well, we think it's beautiful. It was very nice um, post and rail type fence with sheep netting attached. 
Japan so this is very strong and keeps the goats in and open this whole area up now um, the trees uh, were never in the the paddock that we kind of have as a home paddock for the goats um, and now we've allowed the goats in there so unfortunately there's been some damage to the trees but we knew that was going to happen these trees uh, you can you can see there's been some debarking of the trees to be honest we're going to be moving a lot of these trees anyway um, because we want to make access a lot better uh, to get into the buyer um, we've got a great a friend and neighbor who brings us uh, who we buy straw bales off and we also buy hay obviously and we've got access now off the road and they should be able to just drive in either with a trailer or the tractor and deposit a bale or bales of hay for us in there so these trees are going to be removed eventually. We're going to be keeping some and that's why we've made this structure around this tree. This is a horse chestnut. So I'm going to get conquerors from this. I thought it was very important that we keep this tree so that uh, Lillian and Myla can grow up and get themselves conquerors for playing with, which um, we love. I've got great memories as a kid myself playing with conquerors. So we want to keep this one protected from the goats. Um, but the others are going to be selectively coppiced or pollarded or removed and we're going to open this up um, for access. Uh, we've put in a new gate and just a, a rough pallet wall uh, to keep the goats out of the Bakashi pile. Um, but we've yeah, put, in, put in a farm gate which leads off into the laneway. So it's walking the goats up to the north field. So that leads up that way. So yeah, it's, it's really helped um, the management of the goats already. Uh, just one job ticked off a list of still quite a few achievements that we have of putting in laneways and gates uh, to be able to make moving the animals a lot easier. But we're getting there. We're getting there. Mm -hmm.